Hey guys, this is Lori with LM's Crafty Creations and I'm here to share my Bow Bunny Baby Bump tutorial with you guys. Um, I don't have the album to show you because I've already, um, I actually said I was going to sell it on my last video, but I actually ended up gifting it to um, a co-worker who is pregnant at work. So um, I don't have it to show you, but this is the size. It's an 8x8 mini. It's a large mini and it has five pages and it has lots of flips and flaps and interactive things in it and um, and I hope you like it. I do have a tutorial on my channel now on how to do generic, how to generically do um, a mini album cover and the binding system because I'm no longer going to include those two techniques in my videos. So I will give you the measurements for the binding and of course the chipboard that you're going to need but I'm no longer going to show those steps in my videos because it just takes up a lot of time and it really is the same thing over and over again so I'm going to cut that out entirely and only show y'all going forward just the page designs and how to p add the you know whatever I've the features onto the covers and things like that okay so this is actually the album that I did in that tutorial, but you can use that tutorial for the binding and the covers for any size book. So there's that. Um, I will go ahead and start off in this video by telling you. So this is how massive this book is. Do you see this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. These are all the measurements. It's a lot. It uses a lot of paper. I'm just going to fair warn you. Um, it uses a lot of cardstock. I used at least um, a pack and a half of just cardstock to cut my pages, all right? So just be warned, it's a lot. Make sure you have enough cardstock. So the chipboard, you're going to cut two pieces at eight inches by eight inches, and then your spine is going to be three inches by eight inches, so you just need one of those. Uh, what else? Do I need to tell you um, your binding? The binding is going to be seven and a half inches by ten inches is what you're going to cut it at, and then you're going to start at the inch and a half mark and score every half inch um, until you get to. Let me see. I have to do this on my scoreboard to remember. Eight and a half inches. Uh, yeah. So score starting at the one and a half inch mark every half inch until you get to eight and a half inches and the eight and a half inch mark will be your last score mark on your binding, okay? Um, so that should help out with that. I will have, as usual, all of my measurements in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. Um, Let's start with the base pages. I have this out, but I don't want to start with the details of page one until we've done our base pages. So let me find those. Sorry, I'm yawning. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so I've already put together four. You're going to need five, so I thought I would do but my last one on camera with you guys. And I'm going to add glue for this since I've already started the other ones with glue, but for the rest of the album I'm just going to do it with score tape because it's faster. Um, so what you're going to do for your base pages, you're going to cut five pieces at seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And then you need five pieces at seven and a half inches by eight and a half inches. You're going to score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end. So then you're going to fold on your score lines and burnish. And I'm going to add glue. I would tell you guys that I've gotten to where I prefer to construct my albums with glue now. It just seems sturdier to me. And this is my favorite glue ever, which I'll show it to you in a minute. I've mentioned it several times before, but um, as soon as I don't mention it in my video, someone asks me about it. So I want to make sure that 
you guys know what I'm using. This is it. I know mine's a little beat up, but this is Art Glitter Glue. And I actually just buy the refills for it. Ouch. Oops. I'm hitting things, which are right here. And I just continually refill my bottle because it can, you can buy these nifty, like teeny tiny precision caps, and I love it. It's my favorite glue ever. And let me tell you, once you stick something down with this glue, especially if it's paper, and I've even glued my embellishments down with it before, and it stays, it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to stick this down. It's very sturdy. My original album, I glued the entire thing, but again, like I said, for time's sake, and to keep the video as short as possible, I'll probably use mostly score tape going forward to put these pages together. And I'm trying to use craft for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. So now I have all five of my base pages together. I'm going to kind of set those to the side and I'm going to take just one. So on page one, label these for myself, I am going to, so forgive me, I've, I've, like I said, I've already given this album away. So I want to make sure, I'm trying to remember and do this all from memory as to what these page styles look like. So you're going to want to cut, oh, let's see, okay, let's start with these flaps, I think. You're going to want to cut two flaps, and they're different sizes. So the first flap, the larger flap that's going to go on this side is... somewhere five inches by seven and three eighths you're gonna score on the five inch side at half an inch fold on your score line and burnish and you're gonna add your tape to the inside of and I'm using three eighths of an inch tape and add your tape to the inside of your score line I'm gonna burnish my tape and miter my corners. I'm going to remove the tape backing and I'm going to stick this larger flap on the left hand side here. Now make sure you don't go past the score mark. Very important to make sure that your page folds appropriately. And there's going to be a tiny gap at the top and the bottom. I did that on purpose. Okay. We are going to do another flap and Cut it at four and a half inches by seven and three eighths inches again. Score on the four and a half inch side at half an inch. Oops, half an inch. There's my mark. Fold on your score line and burnish. Again, open it up, add your tape to the inside. And we're gonna miter the corner again. And we're going to add this to the inside right. I'm going to remove the tape backing and stick it in. I actually want to make sure I kind of line it up with this one to make sure they're even. And I'm going to fold and burnish. So now I'm going to have two flaps like this. Now what I did is I rounded the corners on my flaps um, in my album. 
Um, so you don't have to if you don't want to, but that's just what I did. So you know. Now, next, I told you this album has lots of flips and flaps, so make sure you're staying in for the long haul with me. You're going to cut three pieces at six and a quarter, six and a quarter by four and three quarters. You're going to score on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch, fold on your score lines and burnish. We don't have to miter our corners here, and on this first one we're going to add our tape to um, the front as opposed to the back like we did before. And I'm actually going to do that to the other two as well. Now, this first one, open up your flaps and remove your tape backing. And you're just going to add it to the very top here. And I'm going to turn mine upside down so I can see. And I'm just going to center it in the middle as best I can and stick it down. Okay. Then I'm going to take the next flap that's the same size, remove the tape backing, I'm going to stick it directly on top of that flap right here that I just stuck down. So there's going to be two here. So we have two flips. Okay, and on the last one, we're going to do it at the bottom. So I'm going to close these up get them to stay so that way I can line the bottom flap up with the top as best I can. Because these are what's going to be on the outside of the page that you're going to see first. Okay, so here's how the page works. And this is why I made the flaps slightly shorter so these fold over. So I had, I think I had a swing tab here. So you could do any type of closure you want. You could do magnets, but just remember you have two flaps here. Or you could do it like this and do, I would do it like this. And so it's going to flip once and flip twice and then flip down and then it's going to open. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to remember. Okay, and what I also did is I cut a piece in my album. I made this large one right here, a pocket, this bottom one. And so if you want to do that, you're going to cut one piece at five and a quarter by six and three quarters. Score on the five and a quarter inch side at half an inch on each end, which is right here. And then on the opposite side, six and three quarter inch side at half an inch. So I'm going to add my tape. I'm going to burnish, miter my corners, and then I'm going to fold on my score lines and burnish.
whoops. And then this is a side loading pocket. And I did my original one. Where, so here is the tape and I added it right here. So there's, a, it's a side loading pocket on this side. And I think I'm going to chop a little, so if you want to do it like the original, you're going to just stick this directly down right here with the flap here. But I think I'm going to chop just a tiny bit off of that so you can tell that it's a pocket. Because I didn't do that before. And I'm just going to cut off an inch from what I just made. So this is optional um, if you want to do this. I was kind of making a hidden pocket before, but I found that a lot of my stuff got stuck under, you know, there, and so I'm going to change it up a bit. But if you want to do it like my original, just follow the measurements I gave you. So, I'm going to stick this down right here. So, I will tell you before we move forward with the next page how I did my swing tab quickly. There. My camera keeps freezing. Um, sorry about that. Hope you all aren't seeing it freeze. So, what I did, what I would do is I would add my pattern paper here and I put, oops, it's going to go like that, right? Yeah. So I would take my swing tab, I don't have one handy, and I would put a hole, like I would cut my pattern paper first. Can you see this? So you cut your pattern paper and then stick it on here and then you would draw where you want your hole for your swing tab on the pattern paper before you stick it down. So I only stick my swing tab down to the pattern paper, and I know some people, I think, actually do it to the page itself, and I don't do that. So I just wanted to let you know how I did it. I hope that that makes sense. Okay, so page two, you're going to take this page one with the two flaps at the top and flip it over this way for our page two. And I'm going to... On page two, there is a large pocket, and you're going to cut that pocket at eight and a half by six and a half inches. Score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end, and half an inch on the six and a half inch side. So I'm just adding my tape. And this is going to be a side loading pocket. And I'm going to miter my corners, which just means I'm going to cut off right where the, the score lines cross. And I'm going to fold all my score lines and burnish. And I'm going to add this pocket on the left-hand side of my page with the pocket facing that way. Whoops. Okay. Let's stick it down even with the right-hand side all the way up. and burnish it down. Okay, so there's my side loading pocket. Then, let's do these smaller flaps first. Yeah. So cut two flaps at five and a half inches by five inches and score on the five and a half inch side at half an inch and you're going to add your tape on the outside 
Actually, let's add the tape on the inside. Yeah. Let's add the tape on the inside of just one of them. And then the outside of the other one. And I'll show you what's up with that. And then I made a pocket for one of my flaps and I cut it to six inches by three and a half inches. And I scored on the six inch side at half an inch on each end and then on the three and a half inch side at half an inch. So I'm gonna add my tape to that. Sorry about the tape. I wish I would have added this prior to filming, but I didn't, so here we are. trying to go fast for you. One of these days I'll have slick video editing skills and I'll just be able to edit all this out. So I'm going to go ahead and miter my corners and for the one that has the tape on the inside I'm going to fold on the score line and burnish and I'm going to remove the tape backing and I'm just going to add it right here and I'm going to line it up in the middle of the page as best that I can. I'm tucking it into this pocket here and that's where it's going to attach to. Make sure you don't go over your score line because it will be jacked up if you do. Okay, and burnish. And then you're going to add the other one, fold on your score line and burnish and now the tape's on the outside. So you're going to add the other one to the opposite side, lining it up with this flap. Okay. There we go. So now we have two. And what I did is I added a pocket. Did I do a side loading pocket? I think I did it this way. So we're going to add a pocket, fold on your score lines and burnish, remove your tape backing. I like adding these little pockets to stick journaling cards in. Yeah. Okay. And here we go. And I believe that I did not add any sort of closure for this page so you know um, you can choose to add a magnet but I found that it stayed closed on its own and I didn't have to add anything so um, it'll eventually lay flat and then these two just open up this way so the other feature of this page are the side little small miniature flaps so you're gonna cut to do those cut two pieces at six and three quarters by two and a half score on the six and three quarter inch side at half an inch and let's see they're going to be added on this side so we're going to go ahead and put tape on the inside of these flaps so right here because they're just going to tuck in And we're going to do that to both of them. Now, I have to remember correctly how I did this. I know um, that I added some journaling cards for reference. So let me get my journaling cards here. I'm going to go ahead. So this is the pocket for the flaps. I'm going to go ahead and add the pocket on before I add the flaps to the base page. So you're going to cut two of these pockets at seven and a quarter by two and three quarters. Score on the seven and a quarter inch side at half an inch on each end and on the two and three quarter inch side at half an inch. Go ahead and add your tape. And let's add these. I think that's what I did. I added the pockets before I added them on so that way I knew 
where to attach them on the base page. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So I'm just going to burnish just like usual and I'm going to miter my corners for my pockets. and burnish on all my square lines first and then I'm going to add them to the flaps. So I'm going to add them here. So remove your tape backing from here. So make sure the tape on this flap is facing up like this and go ahead and add your pocket to that side lining it up directly at the bottom, staying away from your score lines because that's what's going to attach to your page. Okay, let's do the other one the same way. I didn't stick that down correctly. Trying to get it as far on this edge as I can so that way it misses my score line on this side. Otherwise it's going to mess me up. So make, you, make sure you do that correctly. Stay away from this score line here so that way it folds properly. So there's our little undercut pocket. So what I did is I'm going to stick them in here. And I think I just did it all the way at the bottom. But what I used to measure is I stuck these four by four cards. This one has to go right here for sure, okay? Because see this if I want a, a four by six card to go in here, not four by four, then it's got to clear. It's got to be even with this top, right? So it doesn't stick over in my book unless you want it to do that, which I don't. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to make a mark like right here on this page that no one's going to see. That's where I'm going to stick my pocket, okay? So that's how I figured this out. And I'm going to slip this in here, right where I made my marks, not going over my score line, and I'm going to burnish it. And the other one I think I did, let's just test it before I do that, before I tell you what to do. I think I did it all the way at the bottom because it really doesn't matter with this one. Yeah. So remove your tape backing here and stick it down all the way at the bottom. So this is how I did it. There may be other ways to do it, but this is my method, okay? So, then you stick in your little journaling cards here. And you can get like a ton of these things in here. That's why I liked them. So there we go. and then they will flip just like this. So when you fold it over, you might want to go ahead and burnish on this side to get a good fold. Because there's lots of layers going on right there. Alright? So, 
there's page two. So we're done with that one. Let's move on to page three. So grab another base page, clean up your mess if you have one like I do. And we're moving on. Here's page three. And let's see, what is page three? It is. Hmm. Oh, right, okay. So page three has two flaps on this side. So you're going to cut two flaps at different sizes. So cut one at five inches by seven and a half inches and score on the five inch side at half an inch and then you're going to need another one at five and a half by seven and a half score on the five and a half inch side at half an inch and let's see for this first one I would go ahead and add your fold on your score line and burnish Add your tape on the inside. Um, where's there it is? On the inside. Just want to tuck this one into the inside of the pocket. Miter your corners. Remove your tape backing. And here's our base page. Just tuck this flap in right there. Be careful not to go over your score marks and burnish. Now I also rounded the corners on these flaps in my book. If you want to do that, you can. Now on the other flap, go ahead. Do I want to add it on the inside or on the outside? I think I added it on the outside. No, I'm going to go ahead and add, yeah, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and add it on the top. Okay, so sorry about that. So put the tape on the outside. Can't make up my mind, and I don't remember how I did it, honestly. So you can either add it on the inside of the pocket or on the outside on the top of the base page, which is what I'm going to do and just line it up. You don't have to mitre your corners. Just line it up and add it right there on the side. Okay, now I did use a magnet on this page and I also did an acetate pocket. So you're going to cut one flap at seven and a half inches by five inches. You're going to score on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch and then you're going to fold on this score line and burnish. You are going to add your tape to the inside of the flap this time because it's going to tuck on the inside. And that's one thing I forgot to get ready is my acetate stuff. And so, let's see, I don't even think I have what I cut it to, so I have to measure. Sorry about that guys, wasn't prepared for that. So this one's going to tuck in here and there's a pocket here. So this is cut at the pocket is cut at 8 inches by 5 inches. You're going to score on the 8 inch side at half an inch on each end and on the 5 inch side at half an inch. I am going to go ahead and add my tape to this. Okay, 
And then I'm going to cut my pocket out. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler and like I've done on, I already have my score marks, right? So on the left and right hand side of the pocket here, I'm going to measure an inch over and draw a line. Okay? For an inch. There's my inch. I'm going to do that to the left hand side too and also at the bottom. This is to create that acetate window that just, I think it looks so cute. And I'm going to do this at the bottom of the pocket as well. So, I'm just measuring up an inch. So at the top, since there's no score line here, I'm only going to measure half an inch and draw a line. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut this square out. And I'm going to just do it the easy way because normally I do, um, I take my, whatchamacallit, my razor blade and I cut this. But for time's sake, I'm just going to cut out this centerpiece, which gives us the same, the exact same effect. It's just not quite as neat. So then I have the hole for my pocket. So that gives me that. Now I'm going to add quarter inch tape all the way around this. Did I do quarter inch or eighth of an inch? You know what? I'm going to do eighth of an inch. I don't think I need quarter inch tape for this. Either way, whichever you prefer. I'm going to use eighth of an inch. Now also note that I drew my lines on the back side of my pocket so that way I don't have to erase anything because no one's going to see it. So I'm adding my tape all the way around here. And then I'm going to cut my acetate at, let's see, the opening is six inches. So to make it easier on everybody, let's make it six and a half inches by hmm, let's do four yeah six and a half by four inches I didn't write that down okay so I'm going to cut that now is this six and a half yeah, so I'm going to cut the 4 inch side first. I'm using this generic white polka dots because I like it and I don't know what paper yet I'm going to use for this particular album since this is the second one I'm making and I don't want to use anything. I think on, on the original album I used something a lot more colorful. So now I'm just going to take my 6.5 by 4 inch piece of acetate I'm just going to run my eighth of an inch tape all the way around it. And I'm going to burnish. Whoops. Then I'm going to remove my tape backing from all of this.
and I'm just hope you can see, I'm just lining this up and setting it down, getting it as even as possible so that my polka dots look correct and burnish really well on that tape. And this is what we very cute. Now I'm going to miter on my corners here. And I'm going to add this to my flap. So looking. I'm going to fold on my burnish. Oops. And I'm just going to add my pocket on the far left hand side. And burnishing it down. Now I'm going to remove my tape backing from here. And I'm going to add it on the left hand side of the page all the way at the bottom. Again, don't go over your score line and burnish. And so you know, on this page I did use a magnet to hold this flap down, so I put my magnet here and then one here and it held this cool flap down. I love that. That turned out so good. I love the polka dots with the brown. Okay, there's page three. Now let's do page four. And for page four, we're going to do a large base pocket at the bottom of the page. So you're going to cut that at eight and a half by six and a half inches. Score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end, and on the six and a half inch side at half an inch. And lost my tape again. Keeps getting buried. Wow, my score line right here looks wrong. So I'm sorry. Hold on just a second. It's because it is. It's an eighth of an inch off. I scored on the wrong line. So again, just adding my tape. I realized at the last minute that I forgot to add my tape to everything. So I almost did it before I started the video, but I'm trying to do this during my daughter's nap time, you know? So I was like, trying to get this out to you guys as soon as possible. I didn't want to wait any longer. So, sorry about that. So I'm going to fold on my score lines and burnish and this pocket is going to go right here. Line it up right at the bottom and on the sides and stick it down. Okay. Now this page has a waterfall and it's kind of like a portrait style waterfall. So it has larger flaps on the left and smaller flaps on the right and I'm going to go ahead and add my tape on the outside of all of these. So I don't think I'm going to tuck any of them in to the binding. So 
So um, you cut three of these flaps at five inches by six inches and score on the five inch side at half an inch and then cut three of these flaps at five and a half inches by six inches and score on the five and a half inch side at half an inch. Now for this particular waterfall I did a swing tab closure and I actually would not recommend doing that again. I would do, um, you can absolutely do a magnet, magnetic flap if you want, but I would, if I had to do it over again, would do a, um, what is that? The, like the policy envelope style closure where you wrap it around the thing. Why can't I think of what that is? So on the right hand side, I'm going to fold on this and burnish. This is the smaller flap that goes on the right hand side. So I'm going to put my first one down right up against the edge of the page, that pocket that we stuck on there. And it should be exactly the height of the pocket. So when you're sticking that down, just be aware. So I'm going to stick my first one down. I'm going to do it just like you do a waterfall. I'm going to take the second one, fold on my score line and burnish. And then I'm going to add it right here, right in front of this, um, whatchamacallit, flap. Sorry, I have to turn my page to get it right. And I'm going to burnish. And then I'm going to add my last one. And then I'm going to go on the left hand side and do the same thing. Okay. Now I'm going to take the larger flap fold on my score line and burnish and do the exact same thing. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to turn this so I can see and I'm going to line it up at the top and on the side and stick it down. I'm going to burnish this down, open it up and burnish it and then I'm going to add my next flap. Again, I'm going to stick it right in front of that hinge. And then this is the last one. Again, right in front of that half inch hinge, sticking it down. So when the last page on this side is closed, it comes, there's like an eighth of an inch gap between this page and then the hinge of this last page, if that makes sense. So then you have all of those spaces for photos. I just lost my page with the measurements on it. And, and then the space in the middle as well. So again, I would do like the little circle here and then tie with the string, the policy envelope style closure on this if I had to do it over again. Because I found that it was so many layers of cardstock, it was difficult to get it to hold it down properly. And then when you add photos to it, it's just going to be even more. So just um, a tip. So that one, those are done. Now we can move on. Let me make sure I keep these in order. Now get another base page. And now we're going to do page five. So we're going to cut a large flap, which we're going to attach first, right? Yeah. At eight and an eighth of an inch by seven and a half inches. You're going to score on the eight and an eighth of an inch side at half an inch and then at five eighths of an inch. And let me show you why we're doing that. 
I did something a little different in this album because it was larger. On some of these pages have lots of things added on them. So I've just burnished on my score lines. And you see this fold here? So here's my flap right there. There's my page and I have an eighth of an inch gusset right there. And that's just going to allow for this page to lay flat when you have all of the features on the inside that I'm going to add. So you're going to add your tape to the inside of the hinge here. going to miter the corners. Remove your tape backing. And you're just going to add it on the inside of this pocket here. Make sure you don't go over your first score line, okay? And press it down. So again, see I still have my the score line here. When I fold it, it's going to look like this on the side and give me just a little bit of a gusset. And it should be even with this page when it closes. Now on the front of the booklet, I did four smaller booklets and I magnetized them. Now you can't add these to the page until after you add your pattern paper, which I'm not going to add right now but I have gotten ahead and cut them out and you're going to cut four of these out and they're going to be six inches by three inches you're going to score on the six inch side at three inch so then I folded them and what I did on mine is I um, I rounded my corners on all of these and stuck them on the front and added my pattern paper and magnets that way Okay. So I'm let you know I'm not showing you that in the video because I haven't added my pattern paper yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our stacked pockets here and then we're going to just stick those inside. Let's start with the left hand side first because all it is is a simple belly band. So you're going to cut your belly band at um, eight and a half inches by one and three quarter inches. You're going to score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end and add your tape. So you're going to just remove your tape backing here and stick it, and I just stuck it right in the middle is all that I did. Now I'm going to stick it at the score line. So I want you to see what I'm doing here. Which actually what you could do is you could start and just stick it on this end right in the middle of the page or wherever you want it and then just stick it down on this side. So you can see that there's still this gap right here in between. So now we're going to do our stacked pockets. Um, you know what, I did a little booklet on the belly band. So I'll tell you this measurement is six and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. You score on the six and a half inch side at three and a quarter and fold it. Again, I did my round of my corners and I stuck this belly band right, I mean this booklet right here on the pocket. I magnetized it, but again you have to add your paper first. So I just wanted to let you know that. So now I'm going to add tape to this first pocket. For the stacked pockets you're going to cut one pocket at eight and a half inches by three and a half inches. You're going to score on the three, I uh, know I'm sorry, on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end and then on the three and a half inch side at half an inch. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm starting to go hoarse because I'm talking too much. And then, whoops, you're also going to cut a piece at eight and a half inches by four inches. And you're going to score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end. That's this piece right here. And on the four inch, ooh, is that right? Yeah, on the four inch side at three inches. So right there. So then I'm just going to add tape to the top of where the score lines are. So I'll show you details on that in just a second. So see what I've done? Here is my three inch score line and I'm just going to add tape above those. And I'll show you how we're going to cut that in a second. I'm going to miter my corners on this pocket and go ahead and stick it down. We're on page five, page six and seven are exactly alike. So we'll do those the same. Just wanted to let you know that up front. So I'm gonna remove my tape backing and I'm gonna just add the pocket right there at the edge of the page, lined up with the bottom. And then again, on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to cut up to that first score mark. And then I'm just going to cut as a, at a diagonal like that to get rid of that excess to make our stacked pockets. So I'm going to cut right at this score line and cut this tiny bit off and I'm going to miter it just like that so it looks like this and then I'm going to fold on the score lines and burnish and then we're going to stick this on the inside of this pocket to make our stacked pocket so we stick it up right there line it up with the side and stick it down okay Now, we have all of our booklets. I'm just going to stick them in here so we don't forget them, and we're done with this page. Now, I will tell you that I added a little decorative stopper here. I didn't really measure it. I just kind of did what my preference was, and I did a little border on it to, to stop, make sure that the anything that goes in the belly band doesn't fall out. So I just want to let you know. And I also added a magnetized closure on this flap. So I put my magnet here and then on this page as well so it stays nice and closed. But since you have so much going on with the four book booklets on this page, the page would probably stay closed without the magnet. So just letting you know. Okay, now flip that over. Now page six and seven, like I said, are exactly alike. So get your page 7 base page. So this is page 6. This will be base page 7 and we're going to have a pocket on the bottom which we can go ahead and add those first and then we'll do our flaps. So cut two pockets at eight and a half inches by four inches and let's see, eight and a half by four, score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch at each end, and on the four inch side at half an inch. Go ahead and add your tape. And I'm going to do both sides at the same time.
both page sides. If y'all know what I'm talking about. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to miter my corners here. And I'm just going to add my pockets at the very bottom of each page. This is one of the simplest pages in the book. And again, I'm going to add it to the very bottom, lining it up, sticking it down. Now for the flaps, we're going to cut them at, cut two flaps at five inches by seven and a half inches. <laughs> I lost them. Okay, these are five inches by seven and a half inches. Score on the five and a half inch side at half an inch. Add your tape on the inside here. Why do I keep losing things? I'm mitering my corners. And burnishing on my score lines. Now, I did these as acetate pockets as well. So you do them the exact same way we did the other ones. So let me kind of set this aside and show you. So I'm going to do it, draw my lines on the back. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and add my tape to this one since I'm here. And of course, I ran out of tape. So I'll go ahead and add tape to my other one as well. So, did I give you the measurements of these? I don't remember. Okay, I'll give them to you again. So the pockets are uh, eight and a half inches by four inches. You score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end and on the four inch side at half an inch. You're going to do the same with this as you did with the other pocket. You're going to turn it over and you're going to draw on the left, right, and bottom sides a line at one inch in from the edge. I know I'm going kind of fast. It's because you've already seen this before. And then at the top, only do a half inch mark. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the back of this one. The top is a half inch mark. The sides are one inches in. Okay, these are for the acetate pockets. And 
I'll have to measure because I do not remember what to cut the acetate at. So let's go ahead and cut this. And I am just folding and cutting in just like this. But just be careful when you get to the side because you don't want to rip your paper. This is pretty heavy duty cardstock, so I don't really have to worry about it with this. Normally, like I said, I would take a razor blade and cut this out. Okay, there's the first one. Let's do the second one quickly. Just cutting directly on that line. And I need to measure. Again, I'm going to use eighth of an inch and add it to the inside on all four sides. Make sure that you stay within this line. I think I got a little bit over it. It will show on the acetate if you don't stay within the line. I'm trying to do mine in a hurry. Take your time when you do this and get it right, you know? So it just means I need to slow down just a little bit and do it right. Now on this one, these are our last acetate pockets. So this is the last time that you have to see me do this, at least for this book. Okay, now I'm going to burnish. Whoops. Now, let me measure. It's going to be, let's do it at three and three quarters by seven inches. Sounds good. So, Let's see. What do you know? My one little piece of acetate will get me through the whole thing. I'm surprised. So now, oh, sorry, I had to move my hair out of the way. I need to add tape to these and then we'll add them on. Again, tape right at that edge, all the way around both of them. Please feel free to skip through this. I know it's boring to watch me add tape. One more.
Okay. Whew. Done with that. Oops. Can't hold it to burnish. Now I'm going to go ahead and add this one on to here. And this one. And just going to line it up and stick it down. Ooh, this is close, guys. Close, close, close. So I don't like how close that is. So instead of three, what did I measure it at? I did three and three quarters. You're going to need to do it at four inches. So the other side was right. So four inches by seven is going to be what you're going to want to do. Mine was way too close for my liking. So I'm going to miter my corners and burnish. I try to write all this stuff down ahead of time, but I just totally failed on the acetate part. Okay, there's that one. Let's go ahead and add this one because it's going to be close as well since I cut it at the same amount, but that's okay. It worked out okay. It's just going to be kind of difficult to line it up and I don't want y'all to struggle with it. So whatever you have in my measurements down below, that's correct. See, it's just close on the sides. But it's still fine. So even if you did cut it like that, it will still work just fine. Whoops. Mitering. Burnishing. I really love this decorative acetate. It's from that We Are Memory Keepers. I think I've mentioned that before because um, I used it on my Authentique Beloved album. Okay, now let's go ahead and add these pockets. So we have pages six and seven here with our pockets. And take your flap, add your pocket to each one. Line it up. Make sure you get it right on that edge. Now remove your tape backing from this flap. This one's going to go on the left hand side of page six. Make sure I got the right thing going on here. Don't go over your score line and stick it down. These flaps will take some training for them to stay down. I did not magnetize them at all. You know, they kind of stick up at first, but that's okay. So this flap's going to go on this side. So I'm going to remove this stuff here. So I'm already an hour and 14 minutes into this and I still have three pages to go. So I think I'm going to attach this one and I'm going to stop the video because otherwise it's just going to take forever for this video to format, which is already going to take a long time anyway. So I'm going to stick this down and then stop and start a new video. So again here, remove your tape backing from the end 
and stick this one in on the edge of page 7 and burnish it down. Okay, so there's pages 6 and 7 and then on the next video we'll come back we'll do uh, page 8. So go check out the next video. Thanks.